Hi, and welcome to Desert Lady Diaries podcast, a weekly conversation with women who found their home in the Mojave Desert. I'm your host, Dawn Davis, and this is episode number six. If you're a first-time listener, welcome. And if you're a returning listener, thanks so much for coming back. You can find us on the web at DesertLadyDiaries.com, and you can call us with questions, comments, or compliments at area code 760-392-1293. And please remember to speak slowly and clearly. Your message might make it on the podcast. Today, I'm talking with Jessica Berryhill, an animal lover and drummer for the Durr Trio here in the high desert. Hi, and welcome back to Desert Lady Diaries. Today's guest is Jessica Berryhill, an animal lover who's doing some dog and cat sitting in the high desert. So if you're looking for that service, definitely give a shout out to Jessica. And she also plays drums for Durr Trio. So you might have seen them at the open mic at either the Joshua Tree Saloon or up at Pappy and Harriet's or even up at First World. Welcome to the podcast. Thanks, Dawn. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Tell me about your first encounter with the desert in general. I moved to the desert because my mother moved here, and I followed her from the beach, which was a drastic change. And um, I just fell in love with Palm Springs. I moved to Palm Springs first and up here afterwards, but I lived in Palm Springs for a few years, and I just loved everything about like the old Hollywood and Frank Sinatra, huge fan. And just looking for something different. I lived in Ventura for 25 years, and I was kind of tired of it. Something different. Yeah. This is definitely different. I say it's um, expansive like the ocean, just different sand. Sure. (laughs) I love it. Cool. So you came up to Joshua Tree somehow. How did that happen from Palm Springs? I've been to a couple shows at Pappy and Harriet's when I lived in Palm Springs, but I wasn't really sure about moving here until funny story my friend one of my acquaintances who is a professional drummer from Ventura moved right down the street from me in Palm Springs and I was looking to form a band and we happened to connect and he was like we have to, so we were getting a band together we have to move to Joshua Tree Palm Springs really doesn't have the, the music scene that I want to be in and I kind of agreed with him and he's like let's go to Joshua Tree so I'm like I'm there So I moved in a couple months after I met him to an apartment in Joshua Tree, and he followed me like the next day, which (laughs) was kind of funny. (laughs) Cool. So yeah, that's how I got up here, and I love it. It was a great idea, and I'm so glad that I moved here because I had no idea how many talented artists there are up here, especially music. That's sort of my choice of artistic expression, and it's been awesome. I mean, I... I've never gone out as much as I have since I moved here, and I lived, you know, in a bigger, bigger towns than this. Right, and right. The music scene is amazing. I love it. Yeah, well, and that's been kind of a common thread through a lot of these interviews. I'm finding that so many people think there's not a lot to do in the desert, but you could effectively be out every single night of the week doing music or going to art exhibitions or some kind of, you know, spiritual retreat of some sort. There's a lot of stuff going on. It's great. I yeah. mean, and it's a small town. I'm kind of like, I'm new here, so I'm just meeting people, but it's. I feel like everybody kind of knows everybody, especially if you're in the same kind of art world or music world. And everyone's been so kind and loving and encouraging, and it's just, it's like, uh, I found my home. That's and I was born, actually, I was born in 29 Palms. Were you really? I was born out here. Oh, yeah. my gosh. So I'm back. I am literally back home. You are back home. I moved. I moved. A 25-year break. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Longer than that, really. Oh, my goodness. But, uh, yeah, I was born here. I moved when my dad was a Marine, so I was born on base. And um, we moved away when I was about two and a half, three years old. And I, I never wanted to come back. It's like the desert. What's in the desert? Nothing but right. cactus. Right. You know? So it was not really anything I ever thought I'd I never thought I'd be back here do you remember a lot about living on the base no well we didn't live on the base oh, we you lived didn't? in okay. one of the trailer parks on the 62 oh, okay I, I don't remember which one my mom I'm sure does and my right. older sister d- both remember but right. I don't I was a little baby but we have pictures and stuff from back there it just seems like it's a huge city unto itself the base yes yeah I don't remember anything about the base wow well I understand they have a lot of like you can even buy like it's a there's fast food restaurants on the base and you know clothing stores and you can get your hair cut and just it's like a its own self-contained city if you will yeah yeah definitely I mean I don't even think you need to leave the base really right to get anything you can stay there and 
every all your needs are met. Right, that's what it seems like. From uh, coming up here and checking out Joshua Tree from Palm Springs, how long was that period of time from, you know, just you just decided I'm moving to Joshua Tree? Yeah, I kind of just did. I mean, my friend kind of gave me that idea, and um, I came up here to check it out. was looking for an apartment or a room for rent or something that I could afford because I I was working a couple di- different jobs down down the hill, and I continued working them when I moved up here. But then I decided, well, I don't really want to commute anymore. It's too much. That hill, the grade is crazy, mm-hmm. especially at night. And I was working till like one o'clock in the morning sometimes. Oh gosh, yeah. Working at, yeah, at banquets and stuff at the resorts, which was mm-hmm. a, it was a very fun job. Sure. But it wasn't worth the the commute really. So I, I, I'm just gonna stay up here and try to. Find work up here. How is the uh, cat sitting, dog sitting business? It's great. I love animals. I mean, it's, yeah, it's good. It's It's good. And it it works with practice. I I have time Mm -hmm. to practice. I don't have to worry about being too tired when I get off work, you know, Mm -hmm. come home and practice. Very flexible. Very flexible. Right. Yeah. So I'm finding, you know, you really have to kind of make your own way up here. You can't really depend on other people to pay you like you could in other normal cities. Right. Make your own work. Mm -hmm. And that's sort of what I'm trying to do is make my own work. Yeah. It's, um, it's kind of a depressed rural area. I was a kind of surprised by that when I first moved up here. And they're hard-pressed to find reliable people who will show up and do work when they are hired. That's another challenge up here for people who own businesses, mm-hmm. is getting someone reliable. So I noticed it's kind of like that in Palm Springs, too. And it's like my work, I'm kind of was raised sort of, you know, we're being in the Marines all around the place. Discipline. Yes. <laughs> so my work ethic is like, what is it with these people? You know, it's, it just blows my mind how right. people, you know, it's, but that's just the desert, I guess. You mm-hmm. know, it's, it's very hot. So I understand, especially in the summer, people don't want to go anywhere, but. I'm very re- reliable and responsible mm-hmm. as far as work goes. So right. it's just sort of a t- totally different ethic and outlook on life exactly. and work yeah. out here. It's, right. a, it's a complete different change. I mean, it's a good change, though. I mean, I was looking for a change in my life anyways. So it's, it's great. It's just a little getting used to. What are some of those challenges that you're having besides the, the work challenge? Is there anything else that's kind of challenging? Um, well, the heat, really. And like the roads, how there's a lot of dirt roads. My car, I have a new car, but it's, it's not an SUV or anything. It doesn't really like, I can just tell, it doesn't like the roads. <laughs> I end up doing like five miles an hour just because I don't want to blow out my shocks sure. or my tires. Right. Or, yeah. And then some people just jam down at like 50 miles an hour. And I'm like, I can't do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and that that's another thing. And, and the heat and the weather, I mean, it, coming from the beach, it's like 180 total Right. Well, and our summer is is a summer. It's super hot. I like it, I guess, October through May. It's really pleasant, and you can have the windows open. And we do get a little... It was cold uh, January, February, so had my heat on a couple of times. (laughs) It was cold. That was when I first moved here. I actually got sick for the first time in, like, 20 years. Oh, no. (laughs) Because it was such a drastic cold. I mean, it was a weird cold this year. Mm. And all the snow. We had snow. Yeah, I didn't get to see any, but I heard they had some up in Pioneer (laughs) Town. I didn't see that either. Really. I didn't, yeah. How mm-hmm. long have you been out here? I have been here, it's a year this month, oh, August. Okay. Yeah. Cool. It's exciting, and it I'm is. really enjoying it. Yeah, yeah, me too. Is there any time that we talked about so many activities to be done? Is there any time that you ever feel a sense of isolation here, or that you ever feel like you want some isolation? Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm used to that, especially living in Palm Springs. I was living in a studio apartment, and actually, the and before that, I lived in DHS in, in a studio also, and I was sort of like manifesting this music thing to happen because mm. I wasn't doing anything about it. I was just kind of sitting in my room playing my guitar. Oh, wait a minute. You play guitar? Yeah, I play guitar. I, I thought you only played the drums. No, I also play guitar and sing, too. Oh, my goodness. But I'm kind of shy. Okay. So I would just play at home alone for myself. Right. and. So the drums are really perfect for me. I love mm-hmm. the drums because I can kind of just sit back and you just hear me. You don't really see me and do my thing and mm-hmm. have fun with it. But the isolation, being an artist or a musician, is really the desert really brings, I think, that out. If you have that naturally, it, it kind of, for me anyways, I don't know about other people, but it's just sort of come about so organically and like naturally. And the desert has, especially in Joshua Tree, 
Palm Springs, not so much, because like I said, I was mm. sort of like thinking about, okay, what do I want out of life? I'm sort of like a midlife crisis and thinking, I really love music. I want to do something with music, but it's just not working out. And thinking about like manifestation stuff, like if you ever, I don't know if you do that, but yes, I did that for about <laughs> five years because uh-huh. it works. It does work. It does work. You know, it works. And it just took a while, but it's, it's all happening really quickly now. I mean, like the whole music thing up here in Joshua Tree has just manifested very fast Mm -hmm. and I think it's probably because of what I was doing in isolation in Desert Hot Springs and Palm Springs for five years. And all that manifesting and putting those thoughts and that energy towards this goal. Yes. And I mean you're in the perfect place to manifest a musical situation (laughs) because there is so much of it here and so many people to play with especially at the open mics and things like that. I mean even you at the saloon will sit in for many different people that come up on stage and play drums for them. So it's very, um, it's a very collaborative atmosphere as well, it seems like. I love it. I mean, it's just, there's a lot of people that live here that also live in LA or moved here from LA. LA has always given me just like a bad taste in my mouth kind of thing. Like people are very pretentious and not very encouraging. It's like a cutthroat Mm -hmm. kind of business especially with the music industry i mean i don't understand it was kind of the same in ventura really not not maybe so vicious but people just like don't really they're other musicians your peers they're sort of like more of a put down than an uplifting whereas here i it's completely opposite and i love that about here i mean it's just i couldn't have asked for a better situation with the music scene out here and my playing and being around other musicians and artists Mm -hmm. i just I love it. I, I'm going to cry. <laughs> then that's okay. I'll get you some tissues. Okay. When did you start playing the drums? What was your interest in playing? And did you play guitar first or drums? I've been playing guitar for probably off and on 20-something years. I don't know how long. A long time. But I'm very shy. I don't like to play in front of people. And I'm, it's hard for me to write my own songs. I've written lots of songs but throw them away and don't keep copies of them. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. It's just sort of like, well... It's not good, so no one's going to like it. I don't <laughs> like it. So, And then 20 years ago, when I was like 19 years old, I did karaoke for the first time in my life, and I picked a terrible song. I mean, it's a really hard song, and I had no idea. They're sort of like, you've got to really put some thought into this mm-hmm. a little bit. A gotta little know, bit. At least know your range. Yeah, and I didn't. <laughs> I had no idea, and I got up there, and I, there was a lot of people. In the, it was in Florida. We were visiting. My sister and I were visiting some relatives in um got up there they weren't there but my sister was and we i got up there and i sounded terrible i mean i was almost like humiliated i wanted to leave but i didn't i know i sounded bad and i was afraid to get up on stage and never did it until i moved to joshua tree again really i'd been in choirs in school and Mm -hmm. stuff like that which is in a group so i feel a little bit more comfortable because if you mess up you know, you've got right. someone You're covered. Else. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but when you're up there alone, I mean, it's it's pretty scary, especially in the beginning. I mean, I never, you don't really, until you do it, it's like, okay, I, I give those people, like, a lot of props because it takes guts. Yeah. And not everybody has that. And no. it, it takes, you know, a certain kind of person. Mm-hmm. Well, and I think, too, sometimes it's just facing that fear mm-hmm. and chasing it down. And sometimes then once you get up there and at least do it once you can make adjustments for the next time and that's kind of a challenging yourself or pushing yourself yeah. to keep doing it and keep getting that's better true. and all that's that That's exactly stuff, what so. I do. I, or I, try, I try to do. Right. And I just feel like, because the drums I've only been playing for about six months, if that. Wow. Yeah, I just bought my, because my friend from Ventura was a really good person to run into mm-hmm. in Palm Springs because I've always loved the drums but buying your own set is a big investment and what if I'm not good at it and then I have this drum kit that takes a lot of space right you know there's all these things like I didn't really know if I was going to be good at it it was the main thing and he you know had his drum set set up in his living room and I just sat down and started playing and he's like well let me show you a couple things and he's like well you're pretty good and you know let's do something with this I didn't realize how hard it is to keep a beat for three minutes right you know yeah. steady on time exactly it's hard it's it is. not easy and, and not you're every- kind of driving the band you know you between you and the bass you know you're sure. keeping the pace and you're you're driving it if you slow down everything slows down <laughs> yeah that's right yeah and then I found out when I was posting stuff about my shows with my dad's family back in Florida my dad was a drummer Oh. 
Yeah, so that it's, it's in my genes. It is in your genes. That's cool. It's like when I was going somewhere once with my grandmother, and um, I was whistling to the radio, and she said, how often do you whistle? I said, oh, I whistle a lot. She's like, my mother used to like to whistle, so it's interesting to find those things out. It's, it's very interesting. Yeah. I can't whistle at all. I wish I could. You play the flute, don't you? Yes. That's awesome. Flute and uh, I used to play piccolo, which I don't have one, but I they're fun. I love some of the sounds that they make, though. They're very mm-hmm. cool sounds. Yeah. I started out thinking about flute in like fourth grade and then they had an assembly where they brought in all like some high school musicians to show us elementary school kids and let us hear the instruments and somebody got up there and started playing the saxophone and I was mesmerized with the saxophone so we were leaving the assembly and I'd been there with my mother and I said you know I think I'm going to change from the flute to the saxophone and her response was do you want to carry that back and forth to school every day? Because we didn't have bus. I was like three blocks or four blocks from school. And I was like, oh, it was like shut down. Yeah. Are they heavy? I mean, is it that much heavier? I mean, I know. I guess, well, yeah, light. I think it's probably, plus it's a reed instrument. Yeah. And I guess I would have gotten used to, you know, getting the reed soaked and doing that thing before you start to play. But, and I probably could pick it up actually if I wanted to, because yeah. they are the same cleft. So yeah. I can read the music. So, you cool. know, maybe I should go get a used one now. Yeah, that would be great. <laughs> that would be fun. Not a lot of people play saxophone no, up here. No, they don't. There's hardly anybody. Right. I mean, I would love to have, like, I'm right, we're working on new songs, so uh-huh. I'd love to have something like that. I mean, right. maybe we could work something in. Right. So it's kind of funny that I um, have interviewed Cooper Gillespie, uh-huh. who is in a band with her husband. Right. And now I'm interviewing you, who's in a band with Durr, which stands for David... Earl, Earl Ryan. Ryan, okay. And you guys are a couple. Right. So how did that all come together? Durr is a very nice person. He, I just bought my first drum set in February because I was getting my deposit back from my place in Palm Springs and I had just enough money to buy a drum set and I didn't have anywhere really to put it because I was living in an apartment. And I met Durr. Uh, he played at the Pappy and Harriet's with a couple other players and then he played... I heard his music. I really enjoyed it very his much. His songs are so fun. They're great. They're <laughs> awesome. I mean, his songs are like, wow. I, you know, it's very. Someone on Facebook said something like, he takes the mundane and makes it interesting, mm-hmm. and he does. I mean, this the cell phone. He's, he's like the Seinfeld of music. <laughs> yeah, right. It's music about nothing, but it's actually relevant to things that are happening right now in our lives and in the world. It's, sure. And you know, he kind of pokes a little fun at it. Yeah the way he writes it's it's really great i love it and uh so i i really enjoyed his his music and then i saw him the next night at the saloon and i mentioned to him i just i don't don't know how we met maybe i just went up to him and said hi or something and said i like your music i heard you and um we started talking about music and i said yeah i'm buying a drum kit and i don't have anywhere to put it and he goes well you can keep it at my place i have room and so that's sort of, and then I showed up the next, I mean, it just happened that I met him that, mm-hmm. you know, right the day before I was planning on buying this drum kit in right. um, Beaumont or somewhere far away, Hemet or something like that. Uh-huh. I had to go pick it up. So when I brought it back, I brought it over to his house and I didn't, I don't know, I didn't know how to set up a drum set. I mean, I, I'm just <laughs> learning. I'm just right. really learning everything. And, and he knew, he said he could help me set it up and leave it there and practice there and so I brought it over. His bass player happened to be there, I guess, and their practice was happening, and their drummer didn't show up. How convenient. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I sat down for a couple songs and played, and it was, it was like, this works. This is great. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. He needed a consistent drummer anyways. He was using mm-hmm. different people that are in different bands and mm-hmm. you know, I'm more available, even though I was playing at the time for Megan Hutch. Okay. Yeah, so she has other people, and I just decided to go more with Durr because his music, I like. I'm, I'm like, I like to rock out. Mm-hmm. And Megan was a little mellow. Yeah, her style is much different. Yeah, than, it's a very different yeah. style, mm-hmm. and I'm kind of more of a rocker kind okay. of person with music. I love Megan's stuff. It's great. Oh, yeah. She's she's a great artist, yeah. and musician. But for me to play, uh, the way uh, style I like to play is like right. a, a Ramon style. Oh wow! Okay, almost and I've had, funky. Yeah, actually. <laughs> One of our friends, a couple of our friends, have, have said that I remind them of Tommy Ramone. <laughs> There's worse compliments you can get as I a musician. I love him. I love him. Uh, I, mean, I thought he was great. That's fun. Yeah. Yeah. 
So it sounds like you found your community just by going out and getting involved. You were, you know, looking for the music scene. So you went to where the musicians are and you found them. And it seems to have happened pretty organically. It did. That's yeah. Great. And the Beatnik Lounge, I, I was hanging out there a lot and I'm meeting people. And uh, that's a great place, too. I love that about Joshua Tree. It's no other place that I've ever lived in really has had a, a, vin- or a space like that. And it's, it's, it's awesome. I, I, I love Joshua Tree. <laughs> can't say enough good things about it because it's good. just well it's a different kind of feel people seem to be more open and accepting and appreciative of whatever kind of talent you have sure uh, and that also goes to the nurturing that as well because you it's encouraging yeah. when people appreciate what you're what you're doing and like it You've been up here now for... I moved here at the beginning of the year in January. Okay, so not quite a year yet. So based on what you've seen and how you feel right now, do you think that there's enough here for you to stay? Oh, sure. Yeah, okay. definitely. I mean, I think the first one, when I got invited to do a jam with some very good musicians for the first time, I'm like, I can die now because I feel like I've done what I wanted, always wanted to do is play music. So yeah, I'll probably live here forever. I love it here. And yeah. then I found I didn't really know that Graham, the whole Graham Parsons thing. I mean, he was great. I just recently found that out when I moved up here. And that's really cool. I mean, there's so many interesting things about this area. You could find stuff. Well, and it goes back a long way as far as the musical history is concerned. Yeah, there's been so many musicians that have come up here. And I, there's so many. Um, there's also a lot of recording studios that bands come up here and use that are probably in and out of here all the time that we have no idea, you know, yeah. <laughs> under cover of night. They come in, they record, and then they leave, and, you know, but they've got to experience the place and get that, as you called it earlier, that desert feel, which is just so inspiring. It's great. I love it. Do you have any advice for people that would be considering a move to the desert? Advice? I always have to have water because, you know, I didn't realize that you can you can actually die out out here you've got to be very careful the desert can be unforgiving you've got to respect the desert and know kind of the little things about the landscape and the weather and Mm -hmm. it it's harsh especially the summer month yeah i was surprised to learn how much hotter it is in palm springs than it is here i mean it's hot here but i think it's a good 10 or 15 degrees hotter down there so yeah i find even being in civilization i need to drink a lot more water just because of the dryness Mm -hmm. that's really helpful so i'd like to have you pick a question out of my niece's question jar she's 17 and uh, i asked her to ask some questions that she would want the answers to so read the question out loud what do i do first right out of college so i know i am stable right out of college oh that's a tough one Well, for me personally, speaking from personal experience, it took me a long time to finish college because I loved being a student. So I went to school for like 20 years, it seems like, at least 10. And I never graduated until graduated about five or six years ago, finally with my bachelor's degree. And I really didn't feel stable. I mean, it's tough in today's economic times to find work. I don't know what she's going into, what field she's going into, but I feel like Do what you love. And if you don't feel stable for a while, keep at it. And you eventually will. It's it's really tough to to feel that financial security. But if you keep at it and it's something that you you have the determination and the drive, I believe that, you know, you'll get to a point where you're comfortable financially. But it, especially in these economic times, out of college students, I mean, I know so many people from college Mm -hmm. that got degrees back when I graduated, you know, in the 90s. And could not find jobs in their field. They were majors in history and kind of the artistic humanities. And it's really hard to find those kinds of jobs, but it was something they loved. Right. So it's a trade-off sometimes. Of, it's a big trade-off, yeah. Do I love what I'm doing or do I want to go to a nine-to-five in a cube where I'm feeling crushed on a daily basis, but I've got money? Like they say, money isn't everything sometimes. It's a tool and it's helpful, right? but it's not at the end of the day, you're not going to go to your grave going, wow. I love my money. <laughs> that's very true. Right. That's true. You can't take it with you. And no. that's definitely do what drive, you know, to, my advice to her young girl out of college would be do what makes you happy and what you love. Awesome. Because in the end, that's really all that matters. So. You are right. Where can people find Dur Trio? Facebook.com slash Dur Trio Band. We have a Reverb Nation 
Dur the Band. We have a band camp at durmusic2.bandcamp.com. We have a YouTube channel, Dur Trio, and we have an Instagram, uh, Dur.trio. Awesome. So you're on all the social platforms, and I will um, put all those in our show notes and on the little blog on the website so people can just click the links and find it, and maybe they can hear... Um, the drummer girl song. You heard it. <laughs> I have one of heard our it. Newer ones. Yes. It's, I'm still working some drum parts out, but yeah, That's okay. it's, it's good. It, I love. It's so cute. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the cell phone. That's one of my favorites. So if you go out and check them out on Reverb Nation, and that's out there, make that your first stop because it's really a good one. Thank you so much for coming and being on the podcast. Thank you, Dawn. It was great. Thanks. Well, that's a wrap on another fantastic Desert Lady. Thanks so much for listening to the Desert Lady Diaries podcast. There are so many ways to spend your time, so thanks for spending it here with us. I hope you got some insight and inspiration, and if you did, I hope you'll share that with me and the other listeners on the Desert Lady Diaries Facebook page. If there was something that you want to follow up on that we talked about in this episode, hopefully I captured it in the show notes. Next week, I'm talking to Kathy Allen, an artist who moved to the desert 24 years ago, brought by the room and space that it allowed her to do her work, and an apprenticeship with the artist Noah Purifoy. Kathy talks about the changes that she's seen over the years and what she feels brought the largest influx of artists, um, the job that sustains her artistic lifestyle, and her new tiny quirky project, Sunvale Village. I hope you'll join us then. And if you're enjoying the podcast, I hope you'll share it with a friend. Thanks.